My name is Max and I present about the DNA binding proteins in the NF-kappa-B family. On the right you can see the dimer of the proteins using the cationic residuals to bind to the anionic DNA molecule in red. The NF-kappa-B family consists of two classes, which have the rel homology region in common. Here it contains the N-terminal domain for DNA binding and the dimerization domain, which can mediate homo or heterodimerization with the protein from the same or from the other class. The class 1 protein has anchoring repeats on its C-terminus, which needs to be cleaved before it can enter the nucleus. So the name of class 1 protein would come in a pair of numbers. For example, the inactive P105 can be cleaved to P50, which is active. The C-terminus of the class 2 proteins have a transcriptional activation domain, so they have inherent ability to activate transcription, while class 1 requires the aids of other proteins. The importance of this family spans from development to immunity and cancer. Mammals have five of the proteins in the family, which can be dimerized in several but not all of the combinatorial pairs. Only 10 out of 15 possible dimers exist, and 6 are involved in the canonical pathway, while 4 are in the non-canonical pathway. P50 rail A and P52 rail B are the major pairs for each. In the canonical pathway, the dimer forms a complex with I kappa B proteins. When signal arises, I kappa B kinase is phosphorylated, and it will then phosphorylate I kappa B, leading to its ubiquitination. This releases the dimer into the nucleus. In the non canonical pathway, the dimer has one monomer in its inactive precursor form. The signal is transduced through NIC, which phosphorylates I kappa B kinase, which can cleave off the anchoring repeats from the precursor which then becomes an actively DNA binding form. DNA binding is the most interesting aspect of the proteins in this family, I think, because first, it uses loops rather than more common helixes or sheets to bind to DNA, and second, since it exists as a dimer, it will use one of its monomer to bind to half of the consensus sequence. Therefore, the consensus is pseudosymmetric, which means it's rate the same from the other strand in reverse direction. Two loops are used to bind to the DNA, but more sequence recognition is done by L1. Arginine can recognize 2G at the third and fourth position. C on the opposite strand at the third position is recognized by glutamic acid, and any pyridine at the second position can be bound to by tyrosine. P50 and P52 also has a conserved histidine, which recognizes G at the end. So the content of sequence of these proteins is longer by one base pair. That's all for my presentation. Thank you for your attention.